So I thought I'd continue my exploration of the Hermescence range by talking about four floral fragrances. I think flowers are one genre where Jean-Claude Alain's style really shines, and if you want to get a feel for what he's all about, and especially his work at Hermes, I think smelling his approach to florals gives you a good idea about that. They're always very lightweight, transparent. People often talk of him working in watercolors, and I think his approach to flowers really exemplifies that. They're never heady, indolic, or thick, but I often think they're really inspired by the way flowers smell in nature. When you're walking by a flower or put your nose up to a flower, I'm often struck by actually how delicate the fragrance is. And um, while I'm not sure he used headspace technology, it's a, a technique of get, capturing the scent around an item, the whole atmosphere. Um, and that's really what these feel like. It doesn't feel like uh, many other perfumes that attempt to magnify the floral aspect or kind of you know, really emphasize everything about the flower. This is more like you're in the space with flowers around you. Um, so the first one is Muget Porcelain. This one I struggled with a little bit. Uh, it really feels to me more like melon. It should be melon porcelain. Um, this green color really kind of gives you the feel for that, it, almost like a cantaloupe melon. Um, there is a floralcy to it, but there's also, it reminds me of like a melon candy that some, uh, some restaurants give you a little green ball at the end to refresh in your breath. It smells actually a lot like that melon candy. So it's got a little bit of a sourness and a tartness that makes the opening a bit sharp um, and a bit stronger than I'm used to than the other Hermesens. I actually wore it today and while I always find the opening quite interesting, um, I was a little bit uh, let down by the dry down, but it's also a very hot day and I think this probably is best in cooler weather, um, not winter, but fall or spring. I just found the dry down a little meh, a little lacking. Um, but for, for sure, it's interesting. I think his scents are never predictable. Um, and if you're okay with melon, and if you like melon and sour melon candy, definitely give it a try. Um, but don't expect a kind of straightforward uh, muge. Uh, next up, Iris Ukoi. This one also, it was among the first I tried from the line. And I do find it really nice. I'll spray a little bit here. But one criticism you could make of many of these is when you take lightness, wateriness, transparency, mix it with flowers, you get into dangerous territory of sort of bath and body works, shower gels or herbal essence, various other floral body products. Um, and I think the wateriness and transparency of this uh, gave me that sense a little bit at the beginning. but. The more I smell it, and as I smell it now, it really has the softness of the petals of a flower. Again, this was inspired by the way an iris flower smells, whereas in perfume, most iris uses the concrete coming from the root, um, which has a very different character. And I believe there's no iris flower essence. So again, it's a construction, a recreation of the way the flower smells. But what's really amazing about this, especially in the opening, is you know how flowers have that texture. The petal has like almost a powdery but sort of wet texture. I can smell that texture in the beginning of this. So I think if I was to get a full bottle between these two, it'd be this one. But in my mind, these two really go together. They really feel like watercolor florals. Um, they're not aquatic, but they've got that wateriness, that transparency, that freshness, like you can almost feel the dew on the petals. Um, so it's, it's really beautiful. I think with a shower gel comment, it's easy comment for amateurs to make or to kind of make offhand uh, when you first experienced it. Um, in a way, it's like appreciating painting or any other art. You could see two paintings of flowers and say, oh, well, it's a flower. I've seen that before. But maybe one has really finer brush strokes, maybe a more kind of correct or interesting proportions or like a beautiful interplay between colors. Well, the other one lacks all that subtlety. It's just a flower. The brush strokes are thick. They're amateur. The colors aren't quite right. The perspective is off. And I think you really can notice the artistry if you give it time and attention of Jean-Claude Elena's sense. Um, to a lot of people, they're, they're just too light. They're fleeting nothings. 
but these I can smell all day. They're for sure skin scents, but they'll waft around you all day if you tune into them. Um, and when I smell up close, I can really smell the complexity, the delicacy, the really like the e evocative nature of these fragrances to really place you in nature smelling this flower. So next up, when I do have a full bottle, it's Osmanth Yunnan, which again, uh, when I first experienced it, I found it very light, the lightest of all the Hermescence. And I struggled with it. And I think it was in the store with all the noise of other smells around um, that I just couldn't get a good grasp on it. So I kept trying and thinking, mm, it's, it's nice, but it just doesn't last long enough. And I'm not big on projection or longevity being all that important, but this just seemed to utterly disappear after 10 minutes. Um, but one day a nice sales associate gave me finally a full official sample, which are quite big um, at Hermes. And I was able to test it at home and I gradually fell in love with it. And now having a full bottle, I actually find it is, it's quite strong enough. Again, it lasts most of, if not all of the day, not a huge projector, but it goes to show that experience tuning your nose into it, uh, location where you are when you smell it, and even the way you're smelling it. So out of the bottle, getting a lot more even than the little sample valve sprays. And so it feels much stronger. Um, now this one is gorgeous. I'm smelling it again. At the opening, we've got the kind of apricotty aspect, sort of a jamminess of Osmanthus. And at the same time, Right away underneath that, you sense this suede leather. Um, as it dries down, I think these two things merge beautifully into the T accord. So what's so artistic and beautiful and skilled about Jean-Claude Elena is the way just a few notes are so perfectly balanced as you suggest a third note or a fourth note. So the proportions are just right, just enough things where the sum becomes greater than its parts. Some fragrances have beautiful parts and the sum is a hot mess. <laughs> Jean-Claude Elena manages to make the sum um, by juxtaposing just the right smells. Because to me, I can smell the two things separately at the beginning. I can smell Osmanthus, kind of apricotty, a little bit fruity, jammy, slightly sweet kind of smell. And behind it, I can smell leather. And as those come together, it turns into more the sense of a tea, of a black tea. So this one's really beautiful. I suggest giving it uh, more than one try if you found it disappointing or too light the first time. And that's all for the main florals. Of course, roses are flowers, but I did a separate video on Hermes roses. So I'll just quickly introduce Rosy Gibbana, fresh, bright, zingy rose, and Myrrh Eglantine, a juicy, luscious rose at the beginning, very fresh. Uh, that dries down into myrrh, into resins. Here, unlike Jean-Claude, it's all the things kind of at once, it's fairly linear, but the elements ping off each other to create interest throughout the wear. I find that Nagel, it's more like a slope. So uh, here, the rose gradually turns into myrrh rather than the two constantly kind of going parallel, playing it with each other. Both I think are, are great, um, but it's always interesting to notice and contrast the difference in styles, not just at the surface level of smells good, doesn't smell good, but in the construction and the way it wears and the interplay between ingredients. And the last honorable mention, Queer d'Ange. I think I will do one final Hermes video on leathers. And this of course is a reference leather but it's also a floral in disguise. The dry down is largely about these sort of musky powdery flowers like heliotrope um, that again come together, create this illusion from other ingredients of this soft suede leather. Again, beautiful, beautiful fragrance. Almost smells too expensive, too refined just to wear in daily wear. Again, I mostly wear fragrance for my own enjoyment. I don't worry too much about occasion. I do worry a lot about weather, but that's just because the weather makes me feel like certain fragrances, not because of any rules. But this is one where, as much as I love it, um, it feels so special, so formal, that I don't reach for it that often. Um, an aside, uh, Comme des Garçons tape 
which is in the melted plastic bottle. Let me grab it. Not a dupe, doesn't smell the same, but I'm always reminded of Queer Dange. I, and you can see I wear this a lot. Um, it smells like tape at the beginning, synthetic, but it dries down to heliotrope. Again, the kind of strange opening is a kind of a distraction before the floral heart comes out. But anyway, not a Hermes, but if you want kind of a weirdo modernist take on some of the themes found in Queer Donish, give that Comme des Garcons a try. Anyway, enjoy your summer, go smell a flower, or an Hermes flower, and I'll see you next time.